I want to bring on my friend Poppy Lou, who's been doing some some great work with reproductive justice. She's an actor and an activist. Please welcome Poppy. Hey, Poppy. Hi. So good of you to take some time out from your schedule as a smash hit sitcom star. Yeah, the cult classic Sunnyside, right up there with Donnie Darko. It really is the Donnie Darko of sitcoms. You know? It really is. <laughs> That's the only way to describe it. And you are the Jake Gyllenhaal of indie comedy, is what everyone says. Moses. I keep saying that to Deadline. They keep sending me the same cease and desist. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I wanted to talk to you because you're doing something cool with, with this time. And uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about some of your, your activism work. You probably explain it a little bit better than I can. But it's around reproductive justice, which is a very important issue right now and is getting even more serious because of our recent Supreme Court whoopsie daisies. Yeah. Um, so I serve on the board of a really incredible organization called Sister Song, um, Sister Song Women of Color Reproductive Justice Collective. And it is entirely led by Black, Indigenous, Latinx, and Asian Pacific Islander women of color and queer trans people of color um, with the idea that like we need to be centering the most marginalized communities first if we're trying to create the liberated world that we are dreaming of. And the reason why it's reproductive justice is because kind of prior to this, the movement around like abortion was very much like, like a white second wave feminist, like, um, framework of it in terms of pro-choice and anti-choice. Um, that's how like abortion was talked about and that was sort of like the extent of the conversation about like body autonomy and rights. But um, the idea here is that, you know, you don't really have choice actually if you don't have access. You know, you don't have choice if you're facing state violence. You don't face, you don't have choice if you're undocumented um, and you can't like, and you're fearing deportation. You don't have choice if like, you know, you're incarcerated. So this is more about access. It's about meeting communities and people where they're at. Um, and it's really shifting the conversation into a way that's looking more holistically at, um, Sister Song says it really great. They're like, it's about people's rights to have children if they want to, not have children if they don't want to, and to raise their families in safe and sustainable environments. That's the organization. They're the best. They're so great. More recently, during quarantine, I started a campaign within Sister Song called Asians for Black Births, which is in support of the work that Deputy Director Leah Jones um, at Sister Song is doing that's called the Birth Justice Care Fund, which is just like providing direct funds for right now, like um, primarily black mamas and caregivers in Georgia, um, just support around birth, postpartum, labor, doula needs, like midwives, et cetera. And so this campaign, Asians for Black Births, is like really rallying my Asian American and Asian Pacific Islander communities to be supporting this work. Um, and it's not just a fundraiser. We're hoping that like we're using this to like actually kind of share information with Asian American communities who like historically have been very complicit with whiteness, have really not examined their own proximity to whiteness, um, have like not always shown solidarity with black and brown communities. Um, and like really asking ourselves during this moment to be like, we need to look at our own histories and our own complicities to understand how we show up as like migrants at like in this moment in time. Okay, so as far as the, the organization goes, it's, it's helping people with, with actual resources or some of the money is going towards, uh, sometimes just supporting some of these. Yeah, so the Birth Justice Care Fund is direct monetary support for people that are giving birth. Um, but Sister Song at large, they do all sorts of things, um, including uh, court cases. Well, you're doing really great work and you're honestly making us look bad for not doing the same. So if people want to support Sister Song and the work you're doing, which you've already raised uh, a lot of money, where can people find you if they, want to, if they want to help out? For Asians for Black Births, you can go to at Asians for Black Births on Instagram. Um, and there's a link that goes to the GoFundMe. And yeah, learn more about Sister Song. They're on Instagram at sistersong underscore W-O-C. Um, and 
sistersong.net. So go there. Let's tell everything. Go there. Okay, thank you so much for talking with us and, and, and educating us and letting us know what we can do to help because there's honestly so many things out there that just to narrow it down is, is great. Love you, Moses. Thank you. Love you too. Thank you so much. It's good seeing you. Papi Lou, everyone. The organization is Sister Song. Mwah.